brought to you by Gospel of God's Grace Ministries, bringing hope to the hopeless. The grace of God is sufficient for you. The grace of God is sufficient for you. Here we are once again in the presence of God. Being in God's presence is a thing of joy. Whenever we come to the presence of the Holy Spirit, we become better. And the Bible says, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I believe that my meeting with you today shall empower you and change you into a new person. I want to talk about an important subject regarding our faith. I know that faith is an expectation. That is, whenever we come to God, we come with an expectation. Expectation to be healed, to be delivered, to be blessed. We expect one thing or the other from God. And many a times there are even ways of which we expect the Holy Spirit to execute his way in order for us to receive our blessing. I want to share with you the word of God from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse 1. The Bible says, Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him, the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now, bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel. And she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who in Samaria he would cure him of his leprosy. That is, in the situation of Naaman, the man was leprous. But according to the scripture, his master valued him highly because the Bible says, with him and through him, the Lord had given victory to that king. And in his company, in one of his servants, there was a girl who came from Israel. She knew a prophet of God. She knew what God did through that prophet. And she said to her mistress, if only my master knew the prophet of God in Samaria, his cure would come, his healing would come. That was a recommendation of faith. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means go, the king of Aram replied, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending you, my servant Naaman, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read this letter, or the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariot and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. I believe you are following the scripture very well. After the servant recommended to her master, the prophet of God, 
Naaman went to the king and said, Master, I've heard there's a prophet in, in Samaria who could heal me, who could cure me. And the king did not hesitate. Sent a letter and sent Naaman on his way with a letter to the king of Israel. When the king read the letter, because he knew that he had no ability to heal, he tore his robes and said, why are you bringing somebody to me and asking me to heal him? Am I God? Can I kill and, and bring life? He did not know that this letter was indirectly sent to the prophet of God. When the prophet heard that his king had tore his robes, he said, please don't do that. Have the man come to me. This time around, you will know that there is a prophet in Israel. And the Bible says that Naaman went to the door of the prophet. Let us follow. Verse 10. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. This is the voice of the Holy Spirit that came through the man of God. Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Mm. Listen to what he said. I thought that this man would come out, come to meet me, stand before me, Pray to the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and then I'm cured. Why is it not even coming out? Why is he telling me to go to the Jordan? He's not even coming, but he's sending a messenger to me to tell me I must go and wash in the pool. What is this? Naaman was upset because the prophet did not meet his expectations. He was expecting the prophet to come out, meet him one-on-one, -on -one, talk to him, address him, pray for him, and wave his hand. However, that was not the plan of the Holy Spirit. It was not upon the divine will. Today, we have so many expectations. When we come to the house of God, we already come expectant. Within our heart, we, are, we have already executed our service. That today, if this man is a man of God, he shall give me a prophecy. If this man is a man of God, he shall wave his hand over me and my cancer will be healed. The fibroid will go. The HIV will go. I'll be blessed. If this man is a man of God, he will see me today and he's going to give me a word. Just like Naaman, he had an expectation that the prophet would come out to meet him. Pray for him. Wave his hand over him, but that wasn't the plan of the Lord. I want to ask you a question. What is your expectation? I want you to listen to my question once again. What is your expectation? What is it that you have said in your heart? Oftentimes, our expectation causes us to be offended. But many a times we forget that our thoughts are not God's thoughts and our ways his way. We forget that maybe we have drawn the service in our heart whereas that is not what God has said. What is your expectation? Naaman was offended. If your expectation is not parallel with God's will, you too may be offended. I was expecting this, I was expecting that, it did not happen, you get offended. Oh, no, 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 no. The Spirit of God is not here. I did not see the Lord there. Whereas whatever that you have said, that is not the Lord's will and desire for you. Remember, your thoughts are not God's thoughts and your ways, not His ways. He said, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than yours and my ways higher than your ways. Let's continue reading. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me 
and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Papha, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Why is he telling me to go and wash in the Jordan? Why couldn't he send me to another river like Abana? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in rage. Our expectation. This is the expectation of Naaman when he went to meet the prophet. What is your expectation as you are coming to meet the prophet? Is your expectation parallel with God's master plan for the service? Let us continue to finish. Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something or some great thing, would you not have done it? In other words, what the prophet has told you to do is a simple thing. Go wash yourself seven times in the river, be healed. Very simple. Now, you are upset. What if the prophet could have told you to do something great? Wouldn't you have done it? How much more then when he tells you wash, just wash, and be cleansed. So he went down. That is, he was humbled. He got back to himself. That, oh, no, 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 no. This is pride. This is pride. My thoughts are not God's thoughts. He humbled himself. So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times. As the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean, like that of a young man. Faith is an expectation. But I call it an expectation if that faith is in line, parallel with the divine will. When we read our Bible, we realize that there was a woman who had the issue of bleeding for 12 years. When she heard that Jesus was in a town, she said to herself, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be cured. Indeed, the woman went by faith, touched the hem of the garment of the Lord, she was cured. But we should understand that it was the will of God for her to touch the hem of the garment of the Lord. So that is why she was cured. When the Lord asked his disciples, who touched me? The disciples said, how can you ask us such a question? Seeing that many people are pressing around you, a lot of people are touching you. But the Lord said, no, no, no. There is one touch. This was a touch in the will of God. This was a touch parallel with what the Lord had said. So we see that this woman touched, but that touch was unique because it was a touch parallel with the plan of God. A lot of people touched but they were not cured. They touched, but it was not born of the Holy Spirit. She touched and she was cured because her touch was born of the Holy Spirit. It was a touch parallel with the plan of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the same manner, the Bible tells us about a man who was born blind. Jesus was passing by. He was by the roadside begging. He had given up. But by the time he heard the noise of the crowd, he began to ask people who were around him, who is passing, what is happening? They told him, Jesus of Nazareth, the miracle maker, the healer, the deliverer, the son of God, the Messiah, is passing. The Holy Spirit inspired him to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I want you to think, in a situation where Jesus was passing, how many people were shouting? Is it only this blind man who was shouting, calling his attention? Absolutely not. A lot of people were screaming, wanting to call his attention, but they couldn't reach his attention because their call was not aligned with God's master plan. But the call of the blind man, Bartimaeus, was a call born of the Holy Spirit. 
So that is why Jesus stood and arranged that he should be called and the man was killed. I want you to think about your expectation. If our expectations are not in line with the will of God, listen to me, if they are not in line with the will of God, then it will be the reason for us to be offended. It may even cripple our faith, make us lose our dear faith. It is not wrong to be expectant, but those who are expectant should be humble in the same manner. When Naaman heard his servants telling him that this is something simple, what if you could have been told something hard? Would you not do it? The man humbled himself, came down. So this is the time for us to come down and say, what I thought is not what the Lord thought for me. What I expected wasn't what God has planned for me. If you bring yourself down, if you humble yourself, the Holy Spirit shall come to lift you up, as he did, Naaman. When he had his servants, went deep himself in the Jordan, he was cured. Leprosy went, just like that, leprosy went off without any hassle. Without any hard work, the man was cured. Good people, it doesn't take anything for Jesus to solve your problem. It takes a word as it did the leprosy of Naaman. It took the word of the prophet. When I say the word of the prophet, the word that came from God via the lips of the prophet brought about healing. That's what it takes. Naaman said, I thought he would come out Stand before me, call his God, wave his hand over me. What a long procedure. What a long procedure. It does not take anything to heal you. It does not take anything to deliver you. It doesn't take a thing to bless you. It takes God's word. He sent forth his word and healed them. That is what it takes. He sent forth his word and healed them. The word of God is what you need to be rescued out of the situation. I want you to begin to pray in your heart, Lord, send me your word. Your word is food in my hunger. Your word is water to my thirst. Your word is salvation when I'm lost. Liberty as I'm in bondage. Send me your word. Your word is liberty. That's all you need for you to be free. Maybe your expectation is a long procedure like that of Naaman, but it takes a word to rescue you. The Bible in the book of Romans says, do not say to yourself who shall ascend to the heavens that is to bring Christ down or who shall descend to the deep that is to raise him from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your heart to believe and in your mouth to be spoken. That is the word of salvation, the word of healing, the word of deliverance, the word of breakthrough, the word of reconciliation, the word of whatever you are looking for. Believe Jesus. Believe that his word is your salvation. I have opened up his word. This is what you need. I want you to turn with me once again your Bible to the book of John chapter 4, verse 43. This is once again another situation. A man whom the scripture says he was a royal official went to meet Jesus with an expectation. An expectation it's not a problem, but this expectation should be in a humble heart to give way to the will of God, to give way to what the Holy Spirit suggests. John chapter 4, verse 43. After the two days he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen 
Listen to this. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. It means they witnessed the move of the Holy Spirit. They saw, they knew this Jesus. They knew him very well because of what they saw. That's why they welcomed him. If you know the Lord by the testimonies you have had, lives that have changed, you are 50% to victory. It means half of the job is done. They welcomed him because the Bible says they were there at the festival where Jesus was, they knew him. You know him through the testimonies you have heard. People spoke of their healing. People talk of their deliverance. People talk of their breakthrough. People talk of their blessing. And all that they are mentioning is beyond human comprehension. You know him. You know him that is the healer. For you to come here, somebody must have told you a testimony that lives are changing. Let's continue. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into the wine. Listen to that. This place he went was a place where he performed a great miracle that astonished a lot, and it became a renown. It went everywhere. People were talking about that miracle. Once more, he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there, there, there where the miracle happened, as here where the miracles are happening. Here, where healing is like breathing. Deliverance is like breathing. Blessing is like breathing due to the presence of the Holy Spirit. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Listen to this. He went and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Come, heal my son who is close to death. Expectation. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus replied, you will never believe. The royal official said, say, come down. Come down before my child dies. The man is hitting hard on his expectation. Come and heal my son. When the Lord spoke to him, he said, please say, come, come down before my child dies. Verse 50, go. Listen to Jesus now. Go, it means I'm remaining here. Your expectation is that I would go, come down and go to your house, heal your son, but the will of God is this. Go, and I remain here. Go, replied Jesus, your son will live. Mm. The man took Jesus at his word and departed humility. He swallowed his expectation, swallow it. His expectation was what? Come, let's go to my house. But the divine will said, go. What is your expectation, people of God? Listen to my question. This is a prophetic question. It's meant to simplify faith for you. I see this question as a shortcut to your miracle. Naaman had an expectation, a long procedure. The prophet had a shortcut. Go dip yourself seven times and be cured. Jesus with the royal official here, the expectation of the royal official was what? Calm down, let's go. Very long procedure. But Jesus said, go. Your son will live. But the man took Jesus at his word and departed. I like that. He swallowed his expectation and took the voice of the Holy Spirit. Swallow your expectation today and take the word of the Holy Spirit. 
Whatever you have said to yourself, swallow it. Humility, swallow it and take the voice of the Holy Spirit. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. So do you see that Jesus was going to travel all night long? He would even reach the place the next day. What a long procedure. Yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. The Bible says when he inquired, he realized that this one o'clock in the afternoon was the very, the exact. I like the Bible when it says the exact time when Jesus said, go, your son will live. The long journey was reduced to a word because the word is near you. I don't know what is your expectation, but the Lord has a word to give to you, which is good news. The word that will come out of God's servant is the shortcut to your miracle. It is the shortcut to your healing, shortcut to your deliverance, shortcut to your breakthrough. What you've been struggling for for quite some time, you've been going out, marketing, send application, you didn't do well. You went to the hospital, took medication after medication, but the sickness still persists. You've called your people many a times trying to reconcile you with your husband or with your wife. It seems not working. The word from the servant of God today, and I promise you, today is your solution. If it was to Naaman, why not you? If it was to the royal official, why not you? He sent forth his word and healed them. Are you believing God for a word today? Are you believing the Holy Spirit for a word that will bring solution in whatever situation you are going through? I want you to swallow your expectation, humble yourself, and wait on the Lord Jesus. He has a word to solve your problem. He has a word, and that word will terminate everything that the devil, Satan, said about you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to begin to picture yourself like Naaman right now. Begin to picture yourself because I'm picturing you. I'm looking at you by faith. Picture yourself like Naaman, a man who was leprous. They left him for the grave, but when he met the prophet, grave no more. He went back to do his mighty job. The royal official was so desperate because he knew that there was no other than the grave for his son. But when he met the word, Jesus Christ, healing came. Hope was born. Healing was born. Life was reintroduced. Begin to picture yourself right now in any situation you are going through. Begin to picture yourself right now. I don't know what you are going through. You've been living your life in the realm of unemployment. Begin to change the perception and begin to picture yourself right now in the realm of employment. You've been living your life in the realm of sickness and disease. You've been a weakling for quite some time. Picture yourself right now and see yourself a healthy creature, a healthy child of God, a healthy woman of God, a healthy child of God, a healthy man in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what is your situation. I don't know what you're going through. You've been entering your house and finding a realm of quarrels, fights, misunderstanding. Begin to change your perception and picture that marriage, picture that house being changed and transformed right now because that is happening right now in your life. As I'm talking to you, my word is changing your life. Believe the Holy Spirit. 
Believe the Holy Spirit right now. Jesus is the word. He doesn't change. He's here. As he changed, then their situation is here to change your life. The Bible says this kind he went is the same place where he transformed water into wine. You know, water is tasteless and wine is sweet. Begin to picture that in your life. That today my life is kana. My life has been tasteless. But Jesus is introduced in my town, in my life, in my marriage, in my job, in my business in the name of Jesus Christ. And taste is being introduced to your job. It's being introduced to your business. It's being introduced to everything that you are talking about. It's being introduced to your bank account that was empty, full of negatives. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to picture yourself. See yourself healed. See yourself delivered. See yourself blessed. See something happening in your life in a positive manner in the name of Jesus Christ. When you swallow your expectation, a miracle happens for sure. It takes place. As I'm talking to you now, I know you have swallowed your expectation because you are a humble child of God. And a miracle is taking place in the name of Jesus Christ. I can feel it. I can sense it. The Holy Spirit is all over you right now. I can feel it in my body. Jesus Christ is here to deliver you, to set you free, to transform your life. And you devil, the cause of their bitterness, the cause of their pain, their frustration, their tears. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this is not your body, it's not your temple. These people are not yours. Thus says the Lord, vacate their businesses. Vacate their jobs. Vacate their lives, their families, and their marriages. In the name of Jesus Christ, we don't beg you, we tell you. We don't beg you, Satan, we tell you. Vacate and leave these people alone. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are, children of the Most High God, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Go, your son will live. Jesus is saying the same to you. Go. The problems you brought here, you have dropped here, you are not taking the back home. The sickness you brought here, you have dropped it here, you are not taking it back. The unemployment you brought here, you have dropped it. You are going back a different person. Whatever situation you brought here negative, it's now a thing of the past. Believe Jesus Christ and grasp this word in the name of Jesus Christ. Grasp this word. Go! Your life is no longer the same. Write it in the tablet of your heart. My life is no longer the same. My situation is no longer the same. My marriage is no longer the same. Everything about me is no longer the same. A great thing has happened in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. As I'm talking to you right now, I'm beginning to see you coming to share your testimony. Coming to talk of the wonders of God. I'm seeing you taking off a new job. Yes, I can see you. I can see you. I see your doctor surprised because what he said and what the scan said, it's not what he's seen. I see you sharing your testimony because the fibroid disappeared. It is out. When you went to the ladies, you saw fibroids coming out of your body. What a miracle. I can see that happening in your life. I see doors open. I see miracles happening. I see lives being transformed in the name of Jesus Christ. As I see it, begin to picture it in the name of Jesus Christ. My people, go. Your life shall never be the same. Thank you very much. Until we meet again, be in faith. Remember, swallow your expectation and be prepared for the voice of the Holy Spirit.
God bless you. Brought to you by Gospel of God's Grace Ministries. Bringing hope to the hopeless. The grace of God is sufficient for you.